Hey guys, you're watching Python tutorial videos on my YouTube channel Python for Microscopists. In the last tutorial, I talked about the theory or the basics behind Random Forest, and today let's go ahead and write the few lines of code to implement Random Forest in Python. For that, I'm going to use a semi made up uh, table. In fact, let me go ahead and show you the data I plan on working with. So here it is. Uh, just to give a quick explanation, here I have a few users, okay? So user number one, two, three, four, and so on. And each user, uh, I mean, uh, comes with specific age. This specific user, I mean, user number one is 23 years old, okay? User number two is 65 years old and so on. I have a few uh, such users, not many actually. I think I have five users. Now, uh, each user analyzed images yeah, at a specific time of day. So at 8 a.m. in the morning, this user had no coffee and was able to analyze 20 images. And for that, we say the productivity is pretty good. Okay. And the same user, let's say uh, at 1700, like uh, uh, in the afternoon, with no coffee, analyzed 18. Uh, productivity slightly went down, I should say. So in a way, this is nothing but uh, how many images a specific user analyzed at a given time of day having certain amount of coffee cups, uh, I mean cups of coffee, okay? And based on that, we said, okay, if uh, the uh, number of images analyzed are like 17 or above uh, or more, then it's a good day, yeah? Or the productivity is good, and if it's below, the productivity is bad. Uh, this is the best data I could come up with. Again, uh, if you have real life data, obviously, go ahead and uh, work on your data, but this uh, should help us uh, understand the implementation of random forest. Now, the question is, okay, in future, uh, when we get some data about uh, a certain individual of certain age having certain amount of coffee and uh, working on images at certain time, hopefully we should be able to predict whether the productivity is going to be good or bad. That's the whole point, okay? So now let's jump into the spider interface uh, and start coding. And let's start by importing the right uh, library. So pandas as pd because we need to handle the uh, data in a data frame and for matplotlib import pyplot as plt again this is in case we want to plot and uh, let me go ahead and import numpy i'm not sure if i'm going to need it but these are the three libraries i normally import by default so let's uh, define our data frame uh, at df as pandas dot read csv my file is a csv file so it's called images analyzed productivity uh, uh, let me look at the folder one dot csv okay so this is the file name and let me go ahead and run this to make sure there are no issues okay so uh, you can go ahead and print uh, you know the df dot head to actually have a look at the first head to actually look at the first five uh, uh, rows and it looks good, right? I mean, uh, the first column again, in case you're new to pandas, please go ahead and watch my tutorials about pandas. The first column is nothing but the index and everything else uh, that you see here is part of our CSV file. Okay, so I'm good. Let me go ahead and comment this out. Normally I add a lot of comments, but when I do this training, I obviously uh, want to make these videos as uh, short as possible so i don't add comments so at some time uh, i'll i plan on sharing this code then i'll probably add some uh, comments so anyway let's go ahead and uh, uh, first of all let's see how the values are divided like how many if i open the csv file i mean you can see the productivity i have good bad good bad Normally, it's a good idea if you have your data balanced, like almost like 50-50, 50% good, 50% bad. So let's actually see how we can, uh, uh, what, what do I do? Okay, let's just define a parameter called sizes. And I'm going to just say, okay, from my data frame, look at productivity column. Okay, so from my data, and then look at the value counts and uh, let me just say sort equals to one so it's going to sort them and now I'm actually printing sizes okay 
So if I go ahead and print it, it should say good and bad. So all this is doing is looking at the productivity column and then counting the values and then sorting them. Okay, so it's basically saying, okay, my bad is I have 42 of them, good is 38. That's that's not bad actually, almost even uh, data size. So that is good. So I can go ahead and uh, comment these two out. We don't need this for our actual code. So I tend to check things as I go along just to make sure uh, everything is okay, okay? So now the next step is for our data to be able to predict what are the independent variables, right? Again, for any machine learning, you're predicting a dependent variable, which is the productivity based on a bunch of independent variables. So in our case, the independent variables are the time of the day. User number is not an independent variable, right? I mean, that's that's just for our bookkeeping purposes. So we can actually uh, drop the user column. Time, we need it because it influences the productivity. Coffee, we need it. Age, uh, also we need that. Number of images analyzed, we can drop that because our productivity is nothing but basically number of images analyzed. In fact, instead of productivity, I could be using number of images analyzed as a metric. Okay, I, I'm just using productivity because I wanted to show you if you have non-integer uh, or non-number uh, data, you know, like good and bad, how can you handle that, right? I'm trying to get both uh, with one stone here. So, uh, at this step, let's actually drop the columns that we don't need. So df dot drop, and uh, what do I want to drop? First thing, let's go ahead and do images analyzed. Images underscore a n a l y z e d. So there you go. So uh, drop this, and uh, again, uh, go back and look at my pandas tutorial. I don't want to repeat everything I mentioned there. But axis one is column, and in place equals to true. So I could have actually uh, defined pretty much the same thing as df equals to this and not include this in place equals to true. But when I write a line of code, df dot drop in place equals to true, that basically updates my data frame. So if I go ahead and print my data frame, control C, control V, go ahead and print this. Now you see in my new data frame, I don't have this image uh, images analyzed column, okay? So there you go. And the next column that we want to drop is the user one. So let's come back here and let me just type user and uh, that should be it, okay? So the, at this step, what we are doing is basically drop irrelevant day uh, columns, let's say, okay? So there you go. Now, once we drop, the actual implementation of random forest will be two lines. So if you want to see that, just go towards the end of this video, okay? But 80 plus percent of the time that you will be spending would be getting your data organized. That's pretty much it. And implementation is very quick, okay? So that's what we are doing here. So drop the irrelevant columns. And then if you have any, uh, I may as well show you, if you have any missing uh, values, like uh, handle missing values, like if you have like certain columns, like if you don't have like coffee, number of coffee for a row, obviously you wanna handle it somehow. How do you do that? Uh, df equals to df dot drop. N A. Okay, what this does is it drops all the rows or even columns that doesn't have any, I mean, even if one of the entries is blank, it's going to drop that row, okay? So since we do not have that, let's not worry about it because we have uh, data in every one of our columns. Next, let's actually handle this uh, uh, non-numeric uh, uh, data. Okay, so let me just type the convert non-numeric data uh, to numeric, okay? So how do we do that? So in this case, we have two values, good and bad. So let me assign good equals to one and bad equals to uh, two. So df.productivity, by the way, if you watched my, I believe in linear regression, I pretty much went through the same process. So if you watch that video again, um, just forward this by a couple of minutes and then uh, uh, directly jump onto the random forest side. So from df.productivity, if productivity value is equal to good, okay, then 
change that to one okay so that's what this line says and let me go ahead and repeat that for bad equals to bad drop that to two okay and now after this let's go ahead and uh, print not sizes print 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 where is my print df dot head let's go ahead and print that so let me run this uh, it said something over there print df dot head that's okay. It's just giving me some warnings down here. Uh, if you want, go ahead and read that. But here it is. So my productivity is one, two, one, two, one, right? I mean, good, bad, good, bad, and good. So that seems to do a good job right there. So we are done converting our non-numeric data into numeric. Again, we are still trying to get to the point where we have the data set ready for random forest. Okay, this is all handling process. So now uh, what's left? I think we are... We are okay now. Now at this point, we need to define what the define uh, independent. Uh, sorry, dependent. Let's do that first. Okay, D E P E N R dependent uh, variables, right? So now our dependent variable, typically you call it y, right? I mean your your independent is x, your dependent is y. This is what we are trying to predict. Okay, which means we are trying to predict it. Which means that is nothing but our productivity column okay so my dependent variable for the training in this case is uh, is coming from the productivity column okay so uh, in fact uh, let me let's go ahead and run this I want to show you one thing here so if you look at your Y here it is an object that has 80 entries it's an ND array object so for machine learning purposes you want your Y to be an integer an object it's not going to help in this case so i'm going to convert this object uh, into as type type i'm going to convert that into integer okay so let's go ahead and type let's see if that changes you see now my y is int 32. so now it is an integer i see the values now one two one and so on right so again pre-handling, pre-processing. Let me go ahead and create some more room. So now we have our Y ready. Now we have to define our X. So define depend, -E dependent uh, variables. Okay. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I keep messing this up. Independent variables. These are, if I scroll back up, these are our time, coffee, and age. Yeah, so our time, coffee, and age, which means all we need to do is from our original data frame, which is DF, I just need to drop the column for productivity. That's pretty much it. Okay, so the way we do that is again, I'm defining my X is nothing but DF dot drop. Okay, which columns do I need to, uh, if I can type correctly, uh, I want to drop the label productivity. Okay, so this is what we are going to drop, and again, our axis equals to one. Uh, so let's see, uh, did I make a mistake here? DF dot drop. I think that's okay. So let me go ahead and run this just to see everything is fine. There you go. My X is a data frame of 80 by 3. That means I have three columns, which is nothing but time, coffee, and age. Okay, finally, we are all set, we are ready. So if you if you already have data that's ready to go, you know, like X and Y, you're lucky. Most of the time you spend in analyzing or bringing the data to this step. OK, so uh, so far, what did we do? Defined our X uh, and defined our Y. X is this independent variables upon which Y is dependent on. And in our example, X is time, coffee and age and Y is productivity. and we are trying to predict productivity. So now let's go and uh, start uh, the random forest where we define what our X is and Y is. Now, typically, it's a very good idea if you take your data and split it into a training set 
and a testing set. So you can train your algorithm using the training and then test it using the testing uh, data that the algorithm never saw before, right? So that's the one, that's the, I should say, the only way you know what the accuracy of your, any algorithm, random forest, support vector machines, linear regression, whatever you're trying to come up with, you need some testing data so you can validate the algorithm. So the way, uh, next step is uh, split data into train and test data sets, okay? So how do we do this? Uh, in again, I covered this in a couple of my previous uh, tutorials, but it's worth covering again, okay? From sklearn, scikit-learn, model selection, okay? Model selection, import, train, test, split, okay? So once we import that, now I can unwrap my, uh, uh, I mean, the way to implement this is nothing but uh, train test split and you give your what your x values are and y values are but what you get out of that is x underscore sorry underscore train okay uh, and I, i'm just giving some variables for my uh, uh, for my uh, output and i'm going to just call this x train x test by the way when you unwrap that you get the training data set and test data set for x you get training data set and testing data set for y that's pretty much it so y not t y underscore train and y underscore test okay this is equal to my train test split of what of my x of my y okay i can leave there but i need to provide my test size equals to let's start with 0 0.4 uh, what that means is i want 40 percent of my data randomly selected and assigned to my testing data set, okay? So of these 80 total entries, 40% of those will be my part of my testing. And uh, I'm gonna give another parameter called random underscore state equals to, uh, let's just say 20 for now, okay? Now, the random state is whatever it's doing to randomly pick these 40%, I want that randomness to be the same every time I run the program. If you don't put this, then each time you run the code, you get a different test size, uh, I mean, test data set, and you don't want that, yeah? Because then your training is done on probably the same data set, okay? I hope that makes sense. If not, again, I covered, I explained this in detail in one of my previous tutorials, so uh, please go ahead and check it out. So there you go. So that's pretty much it. In fact, if you are curious, let's go ahead and print x underscore train. It's gonna print all the x values uh, uh, that are part of my training, okay? Uh, there you go. So these are all, uh, again, these are all random numbers as you can, uh, well, randomly uh, distributed as you can see. Okay. So these are all part of my X train. In fact, if you just see X test, you should see the testing part, which is the 40% of the data that it held for testing. Okay. This is the 40% that we are uh, leaving for testing purposes. Okay. So once you have that, I keep saying you're ready. Now we are completely fully ready to run the random random forest classifier, which is like I mentioned earlier, a few lines. So it's available in sklearn.ensemble, E-N-S-E-M-B-L-E. -E. Again, uh, random forest is an ensemble type of uh, classifier, which is a collection, right? I'm an ensemble. So from random forest, uh, sklearn.ensemble, let's get random forest classifier. By the way, part of sklearn ensemble is also something called random forest regressor. Okay, classifier and regressor are again very, uh, they do pretty much the same job, except for regressor, the result is a floating point number because you're actually predicting in uh, a value. So when we try to predict values in our case, we are trying to predict either one or two, right? What is my outcome? Is it good or bad? So it's a binary result in my case. It can be many, it can be one, two, three, or four, right? So I'm trying to classify it. I'm not trying to do regression. If you do regression, instead of classifying it as one or two, you may end up getting numbers like 1.8. 
at which point you can say okay if it's greater than 1.5 or something call it a 2 or something you have to round it okay uh, so use random forest classifier not random forest regressor for this example this type of uh, uh, example if you're trying to predict some sort of a financial results or if i'm trying to predict predict number of images analyzed maybe i can use random forest i mean that's when i can use random forest regressor because i'm not classifying okay Okay, I think we beat that horse to death. We talked about it enough. So now I'm just uh, 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 generating my model. So random forest classifier. Okay, so I'm calling it. And first thing I need to define is number of estimators, as you can see. How many? So number of... I believe if you do not give this value, by default it's going to use a value of 10. But you can check that again. Number of estimators is 10, and uh, let's uh, uh, let's do random state equals to 30. There is randomness in random forest classifier, right? I mean, I talked about this in the last previous tutorial. So I want that random state to be again the same. I don't want that random state to change every time. Again, you can experiment by changing this random state. It's up to you. So now that I created a model, I want to fit that uh, my data with this model. Okay, I just defined the model. So far, it didn't do anything. It's just It just knows that, okay, the number of estimators are 10 and the random state is this. So now let me go ahead and model.fit. Okay, I could have done all of that in one line, but I try like to do it in two separate steps. X, uh, we are going to use the training data. Okay, so model.fit is fit to this X and Y values, right? So my Y is Y underscore train. So this is pretty much it. So this is when it actually does uh, uh, fitting. So if I go ahead and run this, it should take a little more time. Well, that was pretty fast, but uh, it actually did the fitting. Now, how do I know what's good, what's bad? I mean, how do I know how things are working? So that is why we have our test data set. Okay, so let's uh, test it on our test data set. Uh, let's predict. Uh, and how do you predict on any data? So once you have your data in order, uh, you know, just go ahead and do model.predict, okay? This is true whether you're using random forest or support vector machines or linear regression. The step number one is you create a model, model instance, let's say, and then you fit it to some data, obviously the training data, and then you predict on any other data, okay? Uh, so model.predict, and we are going to predict this on what? X uh, test data. Right? It's not Y, it's X. We are predicting Y. So what we're doing is we are predicting uh, the result using our model for the X underscore test, uh, using X underscore test variables. And then obviously we are going to compare our Y test because that's the result, right? With the prediction test. I hope I'm making sense here. Okay? So the prediction test equals to this. And uh, uh, I mean, I can do print prediction underscore test so if I run this these are all the results right there this is the result of a prediction test using these values like one one two one but how do I know they are correct I know they are correct if I compare them with my original values which is nothing but y test okay I hope that makes sense again so all we are doing is again it's worth repeating training a model using my training data set, which is nothing but X train, Y train. Now that I've done that, I'm like, okay, how good is this model? So I, I, I am predicting the result using the X test data set. Once I predicted that, ideally, if I have 100% accuracy, my prediction test value should match Y test values, right? That's exactly what we need to validate right now. So how do we do that? Uh, and luckily, again, in sklearn, there is something called metrics. Okay, it makes it easy for us to actually compare these two. All you need to do is metrics.accuracy score and then just test these two. But let's uh, say uh, my accuracy is, oh, let's actually put our equal to, okay, metrics.accuracy underscore score that one okay and what are our parameters let's actually do y test 
and compare it with what did I call here prediction test P R E D prediction test okay so this is our accuracy let's print it there's a lot of other warnings it's actually printing but my accuracy here is 0.75 I hope you can see that okay so that means uh, it's 75 percent accurate okay it's not great but it's okay given the limited size I mean my data size is 80 and of that my uh, uh, training set has 48 entries and my testing set has 32 entries maybe if I make my training set a bit larger I'll get better accuracy let's change my test size only to 0 0.2 in which case 20 percent is testing 80 percent is training so let's look at the let's look at the accuracy score so let me go ahead and run it and oh that's pretty cool my accuracy is 93.75 percent there you go. It tells you the importance of the uh, training data. Okay, the more training data you have, the obviously uh, uh, you get much better accuracy. Uh, no matter what, uh, no matter what uh, uh, algorithm you end up using, whether it is uh, whether it is uh, uh, linear regression, whether it is support vector machines or random forest. Okay, so that's uh, I hope uh, that that's very clear now. I actually almost ended the video, but let me give you one more cool thing because we are doing random forest classifier at every node. It knows, you know, uh, how the splits are working and everything. And go ahead and read the random forest paper uh, uh, by Bremen. It's very uh, insightful, I should say. The one unique thing about random forest is it knows what parameters are contributing the best. Yeah, so we can extract, uh, uh, you know, the the uh, feature importances. Okay, that's what it's called. So how do you do that? So if you know, if you want to find out, okay, uh, my parameters, input parameters are time, coffee, and age. Which one of these is the best factor? Is age a good factor? If I get like a younger uh, researcher, do I get like a much better uh, uh, productivity? maybe or maybe not we don't know that so based on this model let's figure out which ones actually uh, uh, you know are more uh, important so let's actually start by uh, listing the column names so it's easy for us to print uh, so is nothing but create a list of uh, what did we call this X right so X dot columns I mean if I run this you'll see what I mean by this I mean by feature list is nothing but it's a list of three entries time coffee and age I just did this so it's easy for, uh, for us to print things out now I want to print feature importances so my feature importance is nothing but panda let's create a series so it's easy for us to print okay so let's create a panda series and uh, the line is model dot feature if I can type f e a t u r e underscore i m important tenses okay this is it this is how you define by the way you can just uh, you could have just printed out uh, let's say print model and dot feature underscore importances underscore so if you do that okay until this point let's go ahead and print out the model import here the important uh, the important instances are uh, 0 0.71 0 0.20 and 0 0.08 but I have no clue which one corresponds to what yeah that's exactly the reason why I'm writing these extra lines of code so let me delete this and that specific line is right here right so create a series right there and uh, uh, and also uh, my index equal to feature underscore list okay and uh, that should do actually but then let's actually sort the values by descending order so we know which one is the highest and which one we have only three so it's probably not that important but let's go ahead and do that sort uh, values and a s c e n ascending equal to false right so did we get everything right i keep okay so that looks okay so now what is this saying so invalid syntax um, n -n 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 oh sorry <laughs> I forgot a period right here okay 
So all we're doing is creating a panda series. Why am I creating a panda series? Because that's the best way to print out, uh, uh, you know, the features in a very easy uh, and readable way. That's pretty much it. There are many ways to do this part that I'm actually doing. The key part that I want you to understand is model.feature underscore importances. This line gives you the feature importances. And everything else I'm doing here is uh, basically trying to print this in a format where we can tell, okay, this feature has this importance. That's pretty much it. Let me run it. There you go. My accuracy is 93.75%. The time at which they are analyzing the images it seems to be uh, very highly important. Like it's given a value of 0.71. Let's say 71.4 uh, in terms of importance percentage. Then comes coffee. How much coffee did they drink? Uh, is 0 0.20 and age is not a factor. Don't be an ageist, okay? Age is usually never a factor for most of the tasks, okay? So respect the elders, <laughs> respect the young people. So age is not a factor in this case. And by the way, this uh, this this uh, uh, CSV file is not completely made up. Uh, I have actually done part of these experiments and filled the gaps through. So this is actually real. Uh, so anyway, what we have learned today how to organize our data if it's in and a csv format okay how to organize it get it ready for well any machine learning or uh, any at, uh, you know whether it is linear regression or support vector machines or random forest you kind of have to handle your data so we learned how to do that and then we split the data into uh, training and testing data sets okay and then we use the training data set information to train the random forest classifier and predicted it on the uh, uh, predict test data set and looked at the accuracy score and said, okay, we are happy if we split the test size, okay? And uh, finally, we looked at the feature importances and later on in future, when I want to analyze other types of data, maybe I can just completely drop the age component and only use time and coffee because why use additional computational resources if that's not going to affect my result anyway, okay? I hope you found this tutorial to be useful and uh, please try this on your own data. That's the only way to learn. If you like this tutorial, go ahead and like it uh, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. And uh, in the next tutorial, I'm going to implement Random Forest for image segmentation. So please stay tuned. Thanks.